I was just sitting over there thinking to myself, in my own little world, carry world, there have been so many, I don't want to break this thing, just drop the mic moments that I'm like, what do I have to say, you know? But apparently, since we have two more days, there's more to say, more to hear, you know? Hopefully, God will um, speak to you, whatever whatever it is. If, if you haven't, if you're at the point where you still don't get it, hopefully today, tonight, tomorrow, tomorrow night, something will resonate with you. Something will be said, whether it's up here, in that, whatever that thing's called right there, the wherever, in your cabin. Um, wherever, hopefully something will resonate if it, if it has not already, because I, I'm, uh, after Christy talked, it's just like, what else needs to be said? I mean, if you feel lonely, if you feel like you're in it all alone, God's right there with you. If you listen to heaven and <laughs> listen to her story, I mean, she didn't go into detail, but you can imagine, um, God was right there with her, and they both acknowledged that after the fact. And thank you, Christy, that that fits. I mean, if you think your junk is too big for God, it's not, okay? It's not. So anyway, um, we have this story that you read this morning. It's the story of Elisha. He is a prophet. He's a prophet. So here's the deal. He is... Um, in a city called Dothan, it's pronounced Dothan by the by the uh, Jewish people today. It's still there. Um, he's there, and uh, there there's a Syrian army that is trying to uh, this this king of Syria or this uh, leader of Syria is trying to um, position himself to invade Israel. Okay, he's trying to find a place to come in and attack. Okay, every single time he gets in that spot, there's no one there to attack. And he's kind of dumbfounded. He's like, I have a spy amongst my servants, amongst my leaders. You you soldiers, or one of you is a spy. And, and, and this guy's like, uh... None of us is a spy. None of us is telling the king of Israel where you're going to invade. There's this prophet, Elisha, that is doing it. And the, the fact of the matter is, he knows everything that you're thinking. He knows that when you sit down to eat lunch, he knows what you're planning. He knows when you, when you uh, are walking along, he knows what you're thinking. He, he knows everything that you're thinking. He knows even what you're thinking when you lay your head down on your pillow in your bedroom. Uh, how many of you uh, have your own bedroom? How many of you have your own bedroom? How many of you have to share a bedroom? All right, so sorry for those of you who have to share a bedroom. Um, anyway, think about the fact that, uh, uh, just think about what you consider your bedroom. How many of you consider your bedroom like your kind of private space? That's your private space. You don't want anybody coming in there messing with your stuff, okay? That's where you go have your deepest thoughts. That's where you may or may not do uh, your Bible study, have your quiet. See how where I'm going with this? There are other things that I could mention, that, but anyway. That's where you go have your private time and where your innermost thoughts are kind of there with you, right? So that's the case with this guy. He, he Elisha even knows what he's thinking in his private space, okay? And so um, the, the servant tells the king, he's, he's like, he knows what you're thinking. He, he's, he knows what you're saying. And anyway, how does, how does a prophet... How does a prophet know this stuff? Anybody know how a prophet knows what he knows? God tells him. 
So he has this ability to know what is going on with this king of Syria because God is enlightening him to the fact. Okay? Mm -hmm. So he says, we got to find this guy and we got to take him out. Mm -hmm. So we're going to find him and we're going to take him out. And so the servant says, well, he's hanging out in Dothan. So and the, king, the king's like, okay, fine, we're going there and we're going to, we're going to take him out. All right. So goes to um, Dothan, surrounds the city. Um, Elisha's servant comes out, looks out, sees that they're surrounded, and he's like, I'm scared. There's an army surrounding us. And Elisha says, don't be afraid. Because those that are with us are greater than those that are with them. And we just sang it. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. Okay? So, story ends with, um, he says, open, open the eyes of my servant so, so he can see this. And so God opens the eyes of the servant. He can see that the, the army of the angel armies. By the way, when you read this, when you read this this morning, you see that L-O-R-D capitalized. That particular version of L-O-R-D, all caps, is the Lord of hosts. The Lord of angel <coughs> armies. Yeah. I don't, if that, there's a goosebump moment for me. The Lord of angel armies is surrounding them and us. Anyway, now my pages are flapping. God will get me back where I need to go. Um, so, he opens his eyes. He sees the angel armies. And the, uh, the the next prayer that Elisha prays is blind the army of the Syrian army um, so that they can't see what they're up against. <laughs> because they'll, <laughs> they'll probably. Anyway. So... Uh, <laughs> Uh, anyway, uh, so he blinds the, the Syrian army, and, and uh, Elisha leads them into Samaria, and he goes up to the king, and he said, and the king's like, should we take them out? Should we, like, be done with them? And Elisha's like, that's not for you to do. Um, that's for God to do. And so what we're going to do is we're going to feed them, and we're going to send them on their way. Okay, so one thing I want you to notice about every story that you've heard this week. No bloodshed. Did you notice that? Did you notice that? The walls of Jericho came down. Now, they might have gone in later and there might have been some bloodshed. But when the walls literally came down from around Jericho, it didn't require them to go in there and start hacking people up and, you know, taking them out. And we're... You know, David mentioned we're, we're talking about Bronze Age type warfare, where, where it is that catapults and swords and all this stuff. <clears throat> the uh, Gideon with his three hundred blowing trumpets and banging pots, no bloodshed. Uh, what was the other one? Dave, yours. What was that? They. Uh, yeah, they they. he what was it? Laying siege to Samaria. Yeah, laying siege to Samaria. Anyway, so they um, they were confused. In, in any of these situations, they were confused. Okay, so I want I want there to be three takeaways for us today. First, and uh, Christy kind of segued into this perfectly. God knows everything. There's nothing that that He doesn't know. Okay, He knows it all. He's um, omnipotent, meaning he's all-powerful. He is um, omnipresent, meaning he is always there. And he is omniscient, meaning he knows everything. He knows when you rise, when you lay down. He knows your every thought, your breath. He knows the number of your days. He knows all this. Second thing is that... What you perceive as reality may not be. 
Okay. What you perceive, what you perceive as reality, may not be actual reality. Matter of fact, sometimes it usually isn't. Okay. Um, Leah, what's that song we sang? Where? Yeah, where the 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 ground you're standing on isn't nearly as real as the God who made it. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you hear that? The breath in your lungs is not nearly as real as the God who gave it to you. Yes. Whether you feel that or not, it's true. Mm -hmm. The beating heart in your chest, even, is not as real as the God who put it there and formed it while you were in your mother's inmost part, or formed your, your inmost part, parts while you were in your mother's womb. So what you perceive as reality isn't always, or usually isn't, what is actually real. And third thing is this, that we tend to look at physical problems and not the spiritual solutions to those problems. So we get easily bogged down by the fact that it's right in front of me. I can see it. I can't fix it. And I don't know what to do. So... Um, we, we usually see uh, see physical problems rather than the solutions to those problems which come in the spirit. All right, so let's go back to uh, um, God knows everything. And I want to talk about the, 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 uh, the Sumerian, the Syrian king. God knows that, and, and, and I'm pulling, pulling out what... Um, what we read about him to make a point about us, okay? So the, the point is that if God knows that guy's every thought, he knows his every move. Don't you think he knows your every move? He knows your every thought. He knows your every mistake. Anytime you're going to make it, and he doesn't give up on you, all right? God knew that Christy was going to be in a closet. God knew that heaven was going to be abused sexually. God knows that I'm going to screw up. God knows that you're going to screw up and mess up and, and not get it right all the time. He knows that. Yeah. But guess what? He promises in his word. And in Exodus, also again in um, Hebrews, he says, I will never leave you nor forsake you doesn't matter so somebody shared uh, that uh, they shared that footprints story who was it shared that footprints thing where raise your hand where are you I don't see you oh there you are trying to hide from me <laughs> I'm sorry, I just went into middle school teacher mode. All right. What's your name? Lana. 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 Anyway, Lana shared the footprint story where you think God is not with you when you feel so alone. And it's true. As, as uh, what's that word? Um, cliche or whatever. As, so sometimes stories that you hear them so many times they just become ordinary. That's one of those that, that you may have read over and over again. And, it, and it can, I'm glad that you actually brought that up again because that's one of those that had kind of become ordinary to me. But the more I thought about it, the more I thought about every one of my life experiences where I felt alone, where I felt like God was so far away. I looked down and I thought the only footprints I can see are my own when he was carrying me. So, anyway. Mm. You're not alone and he never, ever leaves you. Doesn't matter what you do. Doesn't matter, doesn't matter what your junk is that you keep trying to carry on your own. He's not leaving you. He knows. He knows the number of your days. 
Psalm 139 just talks about everything he knows about, about you. It, it, it says, where can I go from your spirit? Where can I hide from your presence? I go to Sheol. I go to hell. I go to the depths. And I try to get away from you, and you come and find me there. Right? Amen. Matter of fact, now that I think about it, you never left me. You were with me the whole time I was going there. Yes. You didn't come get me. You went there with me. Yes. Because I can't get away from you. It doesn't matter. Stop trying. It ain't going to work. You can't get away from me if you're trying. It also says <laughs> that, you know, some of you might be thinking, I got all these questions. And I'm going to tell you what. David, when he was writing that, I guarantee he had questions. Because he says... Your thoughts are too wonderful for me. Yeah. I, I can't even get a hold of them. So I'm just going to declare what I know. Because I can't even get a hold of what you, what you do and who you are and how you never, ever know. Of, you never are not aware of a thought, an action, a breath, a heartbeat, an illness, a problem, a struggle, you're never not aware of any of those things. Yes. You know it all. Right. And when when you're in your when you're by yourself and you're thinking about should I do this or not do it, some of us are unaware when we do the stuff we do. We think I'm alone. I'm gonna do it anyway. Guess what? You're not. You're not alone. Whatever you do, he's there. Whatever you say, he hears it. Whatever you think, he knows it. Um, hmm. He knows the number of our days. He knows... Um, where are you going to be and when you're going to be there? Um, I'm just thinking about a friend of ours that um, was on his 15th wedding anniversary. and So I don't say this lightly. Or anything. He just comes to mind. I feel compelled to share this with you guys. Um, our friend Shay, who was born on his, um, in Puerto Rico with his wife on their 15th wedding anniversary, and he uh, decided to go uh, snorkeling one last time. And um, he got caught in a rip current and didn't make it out. And um, we pray for our friend Misty pretty much every day that she can be comforted and have peace. And, and she knows in her heart of hearts that God knew the number of Shay's days. And he knew that whatever Shay needed to share with the people around him, and Shay was a people person. He touched so many lives. You were not you would not believe. And and the thing about it is, and I've shared this with some people here, some of our loved ones go on, but they don't stop living. Because their legacy lives on. Okay, and God knows that they were going to touch a certain amount of people in a certain way, and their lives were going to continue producing fruit even after they're gone. So He knows that even. Okay, God knows everything. The other thing is this uh, God, or, or, or the reality that our reality may not be, it usually isn't what we perceive. Um, so I need some help here. I just thought about this while I was here. Um, what's your name again? Ben. 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 ben? Yeah. Please come in. Ben. Mm -hmm. Um, did you? Okay. 
Josh. Some big books. Thank you. And I need um Scoop. Yep. Now, I need you guys to surround him. Microphone. Surround him. Right. Right. So, no, 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 you got to surround him. Surround him. Right. So, archaeology is important. Geography is important. I thank, thankfully, I talked to my brother Dave last night. If you don't like geography, um, it's important in, in some respects. And you're going to find out right now how archaeology is important um, for us in this lesson. In that, they did a dig, and they found out that Dothan, the city Dothan, is on a hill. So some of us may have read this story over and over and over again, and you think the servant came out, and he looked up around, and on the mountains outside of the city was this ho uh, uh, angel army, okay? That's when, what the servant saw, okay? All right, so anyway, now I need some other people. Make some room to, um, no, you, Ben, you got to get like right here. You guys all need to face out. You all need to face out. Get, get on the corner. Or you face this way. You face out. You face out. Okay, so anyway, I need some smaller peoples to come around and just encircle them, okay? Encircle them, please. Just go for it. Anyway, encircle them. You guys face in. You guys face in. You guys face in. So the picture that I've always had in my mind is this. Uh, <laughs> that, sorry, I got a little excited there. Oh my goodness. Hmm. All right, these guys showed up. See how they showed up? <laughs> these guys were already there. Yep. Yeah. All right. I don't know if you're hearing me. All right. So here's here's old Ben. He's 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 Elisha's servant. He's he comes up. He wakes up. He looks outside. You can't see him in there. He's in there. He's peeking over the wall. Okay. Dothan is up on a hill. He looks down the hill, and what he sees, what he sees, you guys can step aside for a little bit so he can see. What he sees is this. Look around. Look look. He doesn't see all this. He sees that stuff on the outside. All right? And Elisha says, open his eyes so he can see what's really there and what's already been there. They didn't come later. Yeah. Yeah. They were already there protecting Elisha and his servant. Okay? Yes. You want to see that? Thanks, guys. Yeah. 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 Angel yeah. Army. Yeah. So, so, your reality sometimes is this. You're like, where are you, God? I need you to show up. Right. He is already there. <laughs> I feel so alone. Could you come over here and help me get over my loneliness? He's already there. Yes. All right. So sometimes the reality isn't what we see. Um, Paul wrote these letters to these people in these churches and one of them he wrote said this it said oh that's the wrong one let me find the right one it's in um, Ephesians chapter 1 he says uh, he's basically thanking God for this church that he's writing this letter to. And he says this, so for this reason, I, because I've heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints, I do not cease to give you thanks, give thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the God of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom 
and of revelation in the knowledge of him, having your uh, the eyes of your heart enlightened that you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power toward us who believe according to the working of his great might that he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him in the heavenly places. God wants you to be able to see the reality yes. that is there right in front of you. He wants you to know that there are angel armies encamped around you. He wants you to know that he knows everything about you. And needless to say, I, w I wanted to point out, I hope, hopefully you can see how all three of these points tie together. But because he knows everything and he knows that you were going to be in that spot where you thought he wasn't there, he was there. Yes. And he is there. He's right here. Amen. Uh, <laughs> the, the thing about every one of these stories is, is that there, God needed to confuse the, the, the people, the enemy. He needed to confuse them. That's what he does for us. God has, there are stories, I can tell you, there are stories that many of us in this place have where we did some really stupid stuff, really bad decisions. We weren't stupid. We just did some stupid stuff, made some bad mistakes. I made one about four years ago, and guess what? I don't know how it happened, but God made a way out. The only way for me to get out of my situation was for God to move and act on my behalf. Yes. I promise you. There, I would not be standing, and I promise you I would not be standing right here in front of you. I, I, at least I, I don't believe I would. If God had not acted on my behalf. Yes. He confused somebody that needed to be confused for me. Praise God, he did. Because it would have wrecked me. Anyway, last point. We have problems, we have issues, we have struggles that we face, and they're not unique to us, okay? Paul tells um, another church in a different letter that his ministry. He's talking about his ministry, and he's saying that certain things are happening to us because of our ministry. Um, we have this treasure in jars of clay, and it's the gospel, and we're trying to share it. And people are messing with us, and, and God's letting it. It's happening. God's with them. They're, and he says we're crushed, but we're not destroyed. We're perplexed, but we're not, we're, we're not giving up, in other words. A lot of junk is coming our way, and we're not giving up because of it. And you have that same stuff going on. Nothing is wasted. Okay? Nothing is wasted. Whatever your junk is, whatever problem you think you have faced, whatever struggle there is, it's building something for you. And I'm going I'm to read to you what, what's happening. Okay? This is what Paul said to the Corinthians, and, and hopefully it's a message for you. Because what we usually see are these physical problems... That we feel like there's no solution to, but there is. Okay? And that's to trust in God and believe that he has it. He's, he's fighting for you. He is. All right, here it is. He says all this stuff about what's going on. We're struck down but not destroyed. And we're carrying us in, in us. We're carrying the, the, the body of Jesus. We're, we're trying to proclaim the gospel. And he says, and, and this is what... He decides, along with his partners in ministry, we do not lose heart. Yeah. We are not giving up. And that's my declaration to you. No matter what, what it is you're facing that you think is insurmountable, don't lose heart. Why? Though our outer self is wasting away, our inner self is being renewed day by day. Every single day, you are being renewed. So, what we think are these big, big things, 
My friend Shane Tramp, he trampled. And it hurts. Did I get to hang out with Shane and fantasy football draft at his house? But guess what? These tears, this pain in my heart, it's light. And it's momentary. Yeah. It's going away. It's not going to be here forever. <laughs> this light and momentary affliction, and whatever it is for you, that's the most recent thing it is for me, but whatever it is for you, it's preparing you for an eternal weight beyond, eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison. Nothing that you're going through can even compare to the glory that God is going to reveal to you. With your spiritual eyes. Yeah. And here's the thing. As we look to the things that are seen, as we look, as we look not, sorry, as we look not to the things that are seen, but the things that are unseen, for the things that are seen are transient, but the things that are unseen are eternal. This stuff in front of us is temporary. Yeah. It's not forever. So we need to focus not on the stuff in front of us so much as we need to focus on the stuff that is forever. God, I pray that you might enlighten our eyes, open our hearts, help us to see with your eyes, reveal to us what you see fit in your time. If we need to see something with our spiritual eyes that is unmistakably from you, now, tomorrow, 10 years, 30 years from now, I just pray that you help us see it. If we don't ever get to experience the um, seeing it with our physical eyes in a spiritual way, I pray that you help us to see it in our mind's eye, in our heart, and that we can know that wherever we go, whatever we do, whatever we say, you're right there with us. That whatever we think to be real is probably not. That you are more regal than the breath we breathe and the ground we stand on. And that there is nothing too big for you that can't be undone. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.